This is a program that discusses issues of faith for people looking for answers. This is Viewpoint with Bob Placey. Today we're going to have a doctor's visit that will be like none you've ever experienced before. Sam Kogalanian is the cardiologist in Southern California, originally from Israel, raised in America and received his medical degree at the USC School of Medicine. Today I want to discuss with him his viewpoint on his faith, medicine and healing, and the question that's on everyone's mind, how is the pandemic impacting our health? Hey, most people have one career, one calling, maybe one passion. How do you account for all of this? What empowers you to do what you do? Because I've seen, I've seen videos of you preaching. I've seen videos of you in the hospital. Uh, how do you account for all of that? I think you go to Corinthians when Paul said, I have become all things to all people so that I may win some to Jesus Christ. And my life is to serve God and to serve people. And it's to love God and to love people. So I'm in love with people and I'm in love with Christ. And I want to spread his good news everywhere <laughs> I go. You know, the, the world's been shaken by this very small virus. I mean, as a doctor, you're, yes. you're well aware of it. And why do we so easily as people just default to fear when, when we see something like this? Somebody says COVID, somebody says pandemic, whatever it is, they, however they identify it, novel virus. Something little tiny like that, and all of a sudden our life is upside down with fear. Why? Because of what we listen to. You know, when Jesus was with his disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane, he told uh, the boys, uh, Peter, John, and James, and the others, to watch and pray. And he goes and he's sweating and he is, I mean, he's bleeding from the forehead because the capillaries that are feeding his sweat glands are bursting. He is such in such agony. Why? It's not that he doesn't want to go to the cross for you and me. It's just because he doesn't want to be separated from his papa. Yeah. So he's praying and he comes back and, and you know, Peter's on his CPAP machine snoring <laughs> and all this stuff. And, and, and they're not watching and praying. They're sleeping mm -hmm. and snoring. And I think Christians, we are sleeping and snoring. And we're watching Facebook and Instagram and television and news and the false prophets of Baal while the word of God is left aside and fear, 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 and death, death, death comes into play. While the word of God is life, life, life. We, it's not legalistic for me to get into the word of God. It's I get into the word of God because of my love. And I challenge our listeners, Brother Bob, that they come to Jesus and they come to his word because the word is living. It's in First Peter mm -hmm. chapter 1 and verse 9 or 23, I should say. First Peter chapter 1 verse 23, that his word is living. And so when you come to the word, it's like Psalm 119, 105. Thy word is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path. Hallelujah. That's what it is. And, and he sent for his word in 107, 20 of Psalm, and it healed them. There's life. There's light. There's healing in his word. Woo! That's why I got to be in the word of God. And that's why our listeners can leave death and they can leave fear and they can come to life and they can come to health. And it's a decision. Watch and pray. And when the Lord said watch, he ain't talking about watching television, y'all. He's talking about watch his word. What, what else can we learn? I mean, this is an attack on, on the world's health system. It's an attack yes. that we, we've never seen before, if, unless we were back in the 1920s. What else can we learn from this when we, when we look at what's happened and what's, what's, uh, what's transpired with this, this battle of, of COVID? What can we learn? I, I've never seen so many COVID cases in my life. I, our hospital right now has about 150 cases. I mean, all the uh, all the medical surge units have turned into COVID patient units. And so what can we learn? Uh, that Number one, if, you go to, if we go to John 10, 10, Satan is here to steal, kill, and destroy. I believe this is satanic. I believe this is in the hands of Satan. A lot of people blame this on God. Why blame this on God when God has come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly? So I believe we're in a spiritual war. And I believe in order to stand on the rock, to be lifted out of the mud and out of the mire and out of the COVID to stand on the rock. We got to go to the word of God and to learn that we are just frail human beings. That's what I've learned. Frail. That our time is short. We are a mist that appears and disappears. And we're not living our lives for ourselves. We're living to serve others. And once we serve others, woo, joy, goodness and mercy returns to you. 
That's what we got to do. Well, well, one thing we saw with this, with this COVID thing from the very beginning and even, even now is that, that people with comorbidities, people that uh, weren't healthy, seemed to be falling prey to it easier. It affected them more. What's your, what's your prescription uh, for alleviating those kind of things in the future? Well, there are many things we can do to try to prevent this, right? Number one, stay away from fear uh, while, without watching the television so much because the fear increases the cortisol level. It increases the catecholamines. It constricts arteries of the heart and the whole body, and it decreases the immune system. So fear is tearing our bodies up. But something very simple to detoxify our body is I go for the WWW, water. Water is a purification. Have a lot of water. Don't be dehydrated. Dehydrated gets us to a higher level of disease. So water, water, water. And the second W is walk. Walk, walk, walk. It boosts your immune system. It boosts the endorphins in the body. It, it's a protective mechanism. So that's the second W. And the third W, my favorite word, is the word of God, baby. Get into the word and know that his word will heal you. And that's how, that's how we got to live our life, not in fear, but by the WWW. Simple, simple, simple. So a lot of, a lot of what we see after the fact, because I know uh, as, as we've studied it, that there are people that are kind of long term with COVID. They, they, they're over the COVID the first four or five days, and then things are coming back to hit them later on. What, what other kind of health issues have, have we looked at with people that long term down the road, all of a sudden a health issue comes back they never had before? Yes, uh, there are some risk factors for COVID, by the way. Number one is obesity. So if you're uh, obese, I, I encourage you to start walking and lose that weight. Uh, there's a reason for you to lose weight, not to look good, although that's important, but also to be healthy. So that's one thing. Diabetes is another risk factor. And, and uh, so these are common, uh, and heart disease is a risk factor. So these are common things. What I want the people to know is to be very careful. Those who get COVID, it seems like they do well on the uh, first seven, eight, nine mm -hmm. days, but on the 10th day, it really kicks in. And this, all the cytokines are released and they're not doing so well. So they should be, uh, mm -hmm. they should be at high alert, uh, uh, calling their doctor, uh, being careful, watching their symptoms and not trying to downplay their symptoms. If you have symptoms, go see the doctor quickly. Give me a little more information on the cytokines and how, how, what the, what's that doing in our body? It's a word I had never heard of until my wife researched it, and now I've, I'm hearing it again. Tell me what's happening with that in, in, in COVID patients. Yes, I mean, it's acting like, uh, you know, the normal virus, coughing, sneezing, and all of a sudden there is something called a, a cytokine uh, a toxin release that's mainly in the lungs. And it's like the mucus cells, the epithelial cells, the lining of, of the lungs, the cells are breaking apart. They're releasing all these basophils and all these uh, inflammatory markers. And, and it's like having fluid in the, uh, the pipes of the lungs and just secreting and they're so angry. It's, the, the cell is so overwhelmed trying to beat the virus that is bursting. It's literally bursting and all this nasty stuff the cell is trying to make in order to oppose the antigen, oppose the nasty, is just bursting and, and all this fluid is see seeping out and people can't breathe uh, and we're, they're getting double pneumonias, on and on. So this is, uh, it's a pretty nasty, th I've never seen anything like it in my life. I'm not scared of it, but it is nasty. Is, is it affecting any other, any other parts or organs of our body? Is it the immune system? How, do, how does the cytokines uh, function with that? Everything uh, from the GI, people are having diarrhea. Uh, so they're, it, it's, they're having headaches, but mainly it attacks the lungs. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, you know, what, what is life? It's breath. And the breath of life, when it's taken away, there is no more life. And so this is what's happening. People are getting intubated. I, you know, I, I just... I think I've seen an escalation of it like I've never seen before. I'm shocked that I'm seeing no influenza A, no influenza B. It's only COVID, and I don't know why wow. that is, uh, but it's this COVID, COVID, COVID period. Is heart disease doing the same thing? Are you seeing less heart disease? There's a study now of athletes, 18, 19, uh, 20 years old, that when they're getting mild COVID, 
that 15% of them, uh, their heart is being uh, inflamed as well. So this thing is going to all organs. Mm -hmm. uh, it's notorious. Uh, and, I, you know, I, I have to go to Psalm 91. It says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. It doesn't say he who visits uh, the secret place. It says he who dwells in the secret. That's a big difference. People are like, oh, I'll visit you for a second, God. Thank you so much. Now I'm going to go to Instagram. No, people who dwell in a secret place of the Most High, they, they're the ones that, you know, you could say a thousand to my side, a thousand, ten thousand on my right hand, but it shall not come near me. We need that protection. We need super. Yes, don't, we're not silly. We're going to wash our hands, not touch our faces, but we need supernatural uh, protection. And that's where I go to Psalm 91 to get it from the good Lord. Now, see, that's, that's interesting. You're a highly skilled cardiologist in a highly technical field now. I mean, surgery and th some of those things are getting more and more technical all the time. And at the same time, you're going to the Word of God for direction in your life. You're an evangelist. Do you see any, when, you, when you're looking for truth, even medical truth, where do you go? Oh, this is amazing because uh, I all everywhere I go, they go, they, they, you know, Christianity, they say is stupid. Uh, it has nothing to do with science. I, I say it has everything to do with science. You go to uh, Leviticus 17, 11, it says the life of the creature is in the blood. What does that mean? That means that life comes from the blood. It, it, took, <laughs> it took mankind until 1900 to, for them to figure out that blood was important, that we shouldn't be letting blood out and killing like our first president, George Washington, because that's how they killed him letting uh, blood go out because he had pharyngitis and they killed him because th they bled him too much. It took medicine a long time to figure out that the life of the creature is actually what? It's in the blood. Oh, the Bible said that 3,500 years ago. Yeah, the Bible is true and true over and over. It's infallible. You can burn it. You can bury it. You can ban it, but it will rise and rise again because Jesus Christ is the word. And it is far ahead of science. That's why at times it looks incompatible because God created science and the word of God. Look at Isaiah 40, 22. The Lord sits in throne above the circle yeah. of the earth. Man, it took mankind a long time to say, you know what? Is the earth a triangle, round, rectangle? What is it? No, baby, it's round. Well, the Lord had that written for you in Isaiah 40, 22. So the Lord is far ahead of all this. And that's why I believe I turn to the word of God. Of course, I, 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 we practice evidence-based medicine. I turn to research work. But uh, my number one book of the thousand books I have read, what has given me power and strength and goodness and kindness and gentleness and direction is the word of God. We'll continue with our conversation with Dr. Sam in a moment. If you enjoy Viewpoint, please share it with your friends. Our episodes are all on YouTube. And if you could help with a financial gift, we would appreciate that as we have no commercial sponsors on the show. TV44 created Viewpoint with Bob Placey to let everyone know that the Bible is still relevant today. Viewpoint is not only available on TV44's powerful broadcast stations and cable systems covering Northwest Ohio, but additionally, anyone can watch programs and exclusive bonus features on YouTube. And we've expanded Viewpoint's reach as you can now listen at work or in your car on the Viewpoint with Bob Lacey podcast. Would you like to help expand our reach? Then sign into YouTube with your account and subscribe. Do the same on your favorite podcast app. By subscribing, rating, and sharing Viewpoint content, you will help this life-changing media show up on more search engines as popular and trending. If everyone watching right now could do that, Viewpoint would become more visible worldwide to online viewers in places even missionaries can't reach. As the climate in our world grows more hostile toward our Christian worldview, Viewpoint is a program designed to help defend our faith. Each week, Bob Placey interviews guests who bring the Bible into focus. And we can be salt and light in this culture. Every description of Babylon in this book is going to come to pass. Helping us understand how relevant God's Word is for today. Viewpoint is completely viewer supported. If you've enjoyed and benefited from our interviews, we would ask you to consider helping us by supporting it financially. Your 20, 50, or even $100 monthly gift will help us continue to bring you more of these programs. Go to WTLW.com now and click Get Involved, or you can send a check to the address on your screen. Thank you 
for supporting viewpoint. And doctor, when it, have you ever looked at a patient and looked at their progress, looked at the changes in their life and said, only God could do this? I mean, Amen, yes. I mean, surgeons can knit things back together. You can sew things together, but only God will knit those tissues back together. Amen. What, what a great question, because I, I remember one time I was working on a man's heart artery. He's 80 years old. He's a heavy smoker. His arteries are not gentle. They're calcified. They're hard. And I'm in there, and it's like he's dying on me. Yes, he's. I've got seconds to save his life, and we're putting in a balloon and stent in that artery, and we're uh, we're opening up that balloon. Uh, and then I I try to get the stent, and I just can't get it. And I, I try to push it and push it. And the next picture I take, I I can't even believe what I'm seeing. The artery burst. I mean, it, it, we call it perforation. I mean, I, I he's done. If I don't get a covered stent in there and fix the hole, he's, he's going to die. And so I stepped back for one split second, and, and I prayed to God. I said, Lord God, Jesus Christ, take over my hands. Now, I'm not calling 911. I call him you before. You are 911. Yeah. <laughs> I call on my Lord before. I call him on, on during, and I call on him after. I trust in him alone. I stand on the word of God alone. And so I prayed that. I stepped back into the field. And it, that, that was just a second. I took another picture so I can, I can get the balloon in the right place. Mm -hmm. I, I'm looking at that artery. It's completely, spontaneously healed wow. by itself. <laughs> and everybody's looking at me, and I'm like, I didn't do that. <laughs> I, I, said, I said, the good Lord did that. That's Jesus. Uh -huh. That's all I can say. And so, uh, yes, yes, yes. There, there are many times when I look at things and I'm like, only God. <laughs> Only God can do such a thing. Otherwise, there was a death in our hands at that time. I, I had a patient uh, who came in with his wife, and I, I take care of him. I've opened up his heart artery multiple times. His wife was so sad, and I'm like, what's wrong with you? What's, what's happening to you? She goes, Doc, you're not going to believe this. My, my doctor said I have three months to live, and she's not a, a Christian, yes, and I have three months to live, and I have pulmonary hypertension. They can't do anything. That's when the blood uh, pressure is, or the pulmonary pressure, the lung pressures are too high, and, and it's irreversible, and her, her lungs had become fibrotic, uh, and, and they, they couldn't exchange air well, and she was going to die, and they said, there's nothing for them to do, and I said, I know what we can do, and she said, what? Uh, she's not even my patient. I said, we pray. And I said, would you, would you mind if I prayed with you? Would you hold my hand? And I held his, the patient's hand, and my patient's hand and, and his wife's hand. And we prayed. And I said, in the name of Jesus, Father, I'm proclaiming healing. And I, I will call her Mary. Uh, I'm proclaiming healing of Mary. What doctors can't do, you can do. In the name of Jesus. That's all I said. And then uh, three weeks later, she comes back with the husband and she said, Dr. Sam, you are not going to believe what happened to me. They said that I don't have the problem any further. They're looking at my chart and asking everybody, is this the same person that had the problem? Because it can't be people messed up her chart. I'm like, ain't nobody messed up the chart. Jesus healed her. Only is, this is only God, only God. Now that, that, that brings a question though too. She was a non-believer. Did she, you think she was believing for her healing? Was she receiving that healing or was she just numb to it? She, you prayed and then all of a sudden it happened. Was she receiving that, do you think, as a non-believer? She received it. She received it and after that, uh, she came to Christ actually. But which tells you, I think, I think Christians Christ followers have such a hard time getting healed because we believe that we got to do something, that we're not good enough, that we're not pleasing to God. If I were to ask you and all our audience, our beautiful peoples that are watching, how many people want to please God? We're like, me, me, me. I want to please God. And then if I were to ask, how many people do you think is God pleased with you? And I think most people would say, you know what, I don't, 
I don't think God's pleased with me. I, I'm not doing enough. I'm not reading enough. Do you know that God loves you? That you are a chosen generation? You're a holy priesthood. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You're God's own special people. He has called you. He loves you. He ain't mad at you. He's madly, madly, madly in love with you. And you don't got to do nothing for him to love you. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. I got a question for you, though. You, uh, you would mentioned earlier about comorbidities with, uh, with COVID, one of those being <laughs> obesity. And uh, that is a... It, in the United States, I mean, you go to the third world and see what you see, but you come back to the United States, and I, I traveled outside the country a lot. When I came back, I, I, I would notice that, that the, it seems like Americans, there's more obesity. It seems like it's, it's rampant now. Uh, what's your thoughts on that, and what can we do about it? I mean, if, if it's, it's difficult to lose weight. People go on diets, but what's the answer? Well, I think the answer is uh, if, if the belly has become the God of the person is very difficult to turn around. And I, I people, I, I've, I didn't know this, but people actually kill for food, right? Uh, so uh, and people act like this is like the greatest thing in the world. We need food just to sustain us. We, if food is not life, it gives us the strength to live life, but it's not life. So I think if we change our focus and to say man should not live by bread alone, but by the word of God, if this becomes our number one focus, again, not legalistically, but lovingly, I think God can change our perception and say, you know, I'm just going to eat certain amount of food just so I can live, but I'm going to do other things. And, and you know, now you got reasons. People are like, I want to look good. I want to do this. Now you got a better reason. You want to stay healthy. And you had a book out, right, on, on obesity or fighting obesity? Yeah, it's called I Got a Big Butt. B B U T T but uh, and uh, yes, I got a big butt, and I want to say I got a big gut, but uh, the, I got a big butt. Um, you know, people enjoy that much better. How, so how does, I, I how does it, how does it differ from a normal diet book? I got I got well, think it's know, different. <laughs> yes, it, it's got because it's got four sections. It's got the first section, which is the physical me teaching the patient what to do, what uh, what to eat my top 10 foods, why is it important to be slim? And then I go to the psychological aspect. So first physical, then the psychological. Why do people get obese? Why are they after food so much? And, and a lot of it is, is anger and frustration and depression. They turn to something else. And uh, the third part is the spiritual aspect. You know, David said, my God, my life is failing. My heart is failing. My enemies are attacking. But there's the big but. But you are my God, and you are my help, and you are my salvation, and you are my banner, and you will lift me up. So we need the but word in our lives. Okay, my life hurts. I'm not doing well. I'm obese. I'm, I'm scared. But, but my Lord is with me. My Lord is Emmanuel. He shall never leave me or forsake me. So that's the big but. The Lord is my rock and my refuge, 46.1 of Psalm, a very present help in times of trouble he's so good like that a very present help in times of trouble so that's the big but and the last section of the book is the practical point of view hey here's what you do 1600 calories a day this is what you eat this is how you snack and so it's got the physical psychological spiritual and the practical point of view of how to lose weight uh, dr sam i think you know a lot of people say i want him as my doctor but uh what goes into choosing a doctor, What's, especially if we're looking at a specialist? I mean, we all have a general practitioner, maybe a family physician, and we've known him for years and years, but all of a sudden we've got something we're dealing with, we're going to choose a specialist, oncologist, cardiologist, something like that. What should go into that as, as a patient? A lot of things. One, I'm going to give you guys a secret of choosing some doctors, right? The best way of choosing a great doctor is actually calling your hospital the ICU nurses. These ICU nurses are phenomenal. They know everything. And somehow, if you can get through the ICU, you'll ask, what, let's say you're looking for a cardiologist or an oncologist, whatever it might be. You say, who, who do you know over there? That's a great cardiologist. Can you please tell me? And usually, the ICU nurses will let you know. But another thing, you know, you can go to vitals.com, B-I-T-A-L-S.com. 
plug in a doctor's name and you will see reviews. And if you're getting review after review that's bad, you're like, you know what? There must be a reason why a lot of people are saying bad things. But if you're getting an overwhelming review after review that's like, wow, this doctor's compassionate. He's loving. He likes me. He looks at me. He cares for me. He did so good for me. And it's not one. I mean, it's multiple. You're like, mm, this boy got to be good or this girl got to be good. We have unpacked about everything except the, the rap artist thing. And you just about broke into a rap when you got into the skinny jeans <laughs> and the big screen. Yeah. <laughs> where, did you, where did you start that? You got that accent, too, that comes from, comes from uh, Tennessee, not from California. When did That's you, right. <laughs> when, did you start the, when did you start the whole rap thing? Was it to get patients' attention or nurses or to entertain? What was that? It was in uh, when I was a medical student. I was seeing kids. Uh, I, I came. I went to L.A. C. U. S. C. University of Southern California Medical School, and you see everything in Los Angeles. A five-year-old getting shot in the head by gangsters, and you're like, this, "This is not real. This is not life. This is not how things are supposed to be." And so you can talk to kids all over the nation, and you could tell them you need to study, you need to stay in school. They're like, "Whatever." But if you say, "Sit your butt down." Yeah, like that. They're like, what? <laughs> Who are you? you? You're just a white Armenian boy. How you talk like that? And that's my Tennessee. <laughs> that's my that's the Tennessee accent in me. The craziness yep. of being uh, brought up in Chattanooga. And I think the, the groove uh, and uh, the hip hop motion just attracts people. Attracts. You know, some people are like, well, I don't think you should be talking that way. <laughs> Why? I have become all things to all people. So that I may win some to Christ, and that's how we roll. Well, you're a highly skilled doctor, but close us out with that that rap on the books of the Bible. The first, <laughs> can you do oh, that? Oh yeah, sure. I'll, I'll do a little of it. So the Bible is the holy book. So check it out, baby. Take a look. You got Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judge, Judge, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Kabbalah, and the Cult, Ezra, Nehemiah, Ezra, Joel, Psalm, Proverbs, Peace, Psalm, Psalm, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentate, Y'all, Ezekiel, and then you got a Daddy, Jose, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Maya, Nehemiah, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Yahagai, Zechariah, Malachi. Ah. Oh, that is phenomenal. So uh, we unpacked most of it, I think. The doctor, yeah. the evangelist, the missionary, and the rap artist. Dr. Sam, thank you so much. You have been a joy to have on the program today. We really appreciate it. I'd like to thank Dr. Sam for joining me today. And before we close out our interview, I asked Dr. Sam to pray for anyone who's in need of God's touch for healing. It was so powerful, we've posted it on our YouTube channel. So you can watch and share it with others who may need that special word from God. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next week. Remember, you can watch the interviews you've seen today on demand on YouTube. Plus, you can also listen to all of our episodes on The Viewpoint with Bob Placey podcast on Apple, Spotify, and anywhere you listen to a podcast.